I am not out to say that an electric setup is the best. In fact, I suspect for longer cruises, and for most people, a small petrol outboard is the way to go. I also have a two horsepower Honda outboard, but since having the electric, I've had no desire to even get the Honda out of the shed. For me, I love the peace and quiet when motoring. It's just a joy to glide along on a summer's day. The lack of petrol fumes and the utility of having a very reliable, very quick to start motor is also pretty handy. Electric clearly comes with limitations. Without access to mains power to charge up my battery, there is always the potential I am left a bit stranded at some point. So far I haven't found this to be a problem, but two to three days is the longest I've been out in one go. I do pick my destinations to fit the conditions, and especially with, with my skiff, rowing and sailing is always my preference. I did look into options to recharge with a wind turbine or solar, but for short trips I just can't make the numbers add up. There are times when the lack of horsepower can be an issue. My estimates have the motor putting out about 1.5 horsepower. This is fine for most trips, it pushes my 11.5 foot skiff effortlessly in all conditions. A fully loaded wayfarer with sails up against the wind and tide is a different proposition. The most I've asked it to push the wayfarer against is two knots of current and a force three. It did it, but slowly. It's pretty good for manoeuvring the boats about, but you do need basic seamanship skills to avoid fighting the wind and current. Like many people out there, I didn't want to pay tons of money for an off-the-shelf electric outboard. I've lost track of how much money I've spent on my setup, but I think it's somewhere between 800 and 900 pounds. I think that still comes in quite a bit cheaper than most equivalent electric outboards. I have only a very rudimental understanding of electrics, so again this is definitely not a how-to video. The battery is a 100 amp lithium battery. It's sealed in a plywood box waterproof with fiberglass. I estimate this to be waterproof to quick immersions, but I'm not confident enough to go out there and test it. I use solar connectors for the cables, which seem pretty waterproof. The entire battery is isolated by a resettable 50 amp fuse. A wireless shunt connects to my smartphone, which gives a readout of current being used, state of charge, and estimated time left. It's got the usual USB chargers for phones and cameras to keep the family happy. Connectors for the bilge pump and motor are using high current Anderson connectors contained in a splash proof sheath. I had to use pretty hefty 10mm marine wire but it does mean that the heavy battery can be located in the front of the boat to keep her level. It's nice to have the ability to quickly unconnect the motor for loading and unloading the boat. The battery weighs in at 165 kilograms, and the motor at 8 kilograms. For comparison my Honda with a can of fuel is 19 kilograms. The motor is a Minn Kota 45 pound trolling motor. I have now tested it in a lot of conditions in different boats. The skiff weighs about 100 kilograms and the wayfarer fully laden is over 200 kilograms. It's pretty efficient if you're not in a hurry. As soon as you start pushing the boat speed up the efficiency drops right off. If I take my time at three and a half knots then the battery will last seven to eight hours. If I start cranking up the speed to four and a half knots then three to four hours is my limit. Overall, I'm very glad to have the electric set up. I suspect part of me likes the challenge of having to plan ahead what the wind and tides are going to do. For those lovely summer evenings heading out to the pub, it's just the best. <laughs>